Imagine this, you're running an up and coming business and you have this really talented, hardworking salesperson on your team. Now this salesperson is so good, they bring in more business than you even know what to do with. The downside is, this employee really struggles with using a computer. Now if you had someone like this on your staff, would you rely on them to do additional accounting and admin work, even though you knew it would take them a long time and keep them away from what they're best at? Chlorine is an excellent sanitizer, but comparatively, it's a pretty weak oxidizer. And unfortunately, the vast majority of contaminants in a swimming pool are oxidizable substances, not living microorganisms. In other words, most of chlorine's job is doing something it's really not great at doing, and that's oxidation. That's like locking down your best salesperson in the office, not selling. In this video, we'll be talking about Orenda's second pillar of proactive pool care, which covers chlorination, oxidation, and why managing bather waste is a proactive thing to do. The action step, complement chlorine with enzymes and or secondary oxidation systems to better manage non-living organic waste. Chlorine has a lot of responsibilities. We rely on it to sanitize our water and to keep it safe and clean. But if you've ever had an outbreak, like an algae bloom, your sanitizer was overpowered. Sanitization is a function of the kill rate of the sanitizer versus the growth and reproductive rate of the contaminant. When the growth rate exceeds the sanitizer's kill rate, you can get an outbreak. We'll cover more of this in pillar number three. But where does chlorine go? Well, it gets reduced when contaminants get oxidized, and we'll go more in depth on this process at the molecular level in lesson three on ORP. On a practical level, chlorine gets used up when it oxidizes contaminants, so more chlorine is needed to oxidize new contaminants. Have you ever seen the oxidizer hazard symbol on your chlorine bucket? It looks just like a hockey puck on fire. Now, oxidation doesn't literally mean fire, but we're going to refer to oxidation as burning because the idea of burning something underwater is extremely metal. Relying on chlorine to burn through organic waste and other non-living contaminants is inefficient and it uses up chlorine pretty rapidly. Eventually, chlorine can fall short, which leads operators to tactics like superchlorination or shocking. But just throwing more chlorine at the problem is a reactive strategy, and this whole video series is about proactive strategies. One method for managing non-living organics is by using enzymes. Enzymes accelerate the breakdown and removal of non-living organics by lowering the amount of energy needed for a reaction to occur. In English, enzymes can do the heavy lifting against sunscreen, lotions, body oils, sweat, cosmetics, etc. so that the chlorine doesn't have to do it all by itself. Enzymes also leave a residual, meaning they can stay in circulation in the body of water. But be aware, Arenda's enzymes can help remove carbon waste, but not nitrogen compounds like ammonia or nitrates. We have another video later that explains more about nitrogen. Secondary oxidation systems provide oxidation at a much higher level than chlorine can. These systems have been proven to be very beneficial and can increase chlorine's efficiency. We will go more into depth on the strengths and weaknesses of these systems later on in this course. I mentioned earlier that chlorine is not the best oxidizer, and now you know why. Chlorine gets used up trying to oxidize bather waste. It's performing a function it just wasn't designed for, so we need to help it out. Maybe it's time to bring in a support team so that your star salesperson can get out there and make you money. In the rest of the second course, we'll go more in depth about how chlorination works and how supplemental strategies can help make it more efficient. 